Hi guys, Wheelie here. I'm hiding off camera today so I can show off my dragonfly baby blanket. Isn't it gorgeous? The blanket is made up of dragonfly blocks and solid blocks, creating a checkerboard effect. After the setup row, this pattern is an eight row repeat. So you keep repeating those eight rows until your blanket is big enough. Then you work the final row. In this video, I'll show you how to crochet the blanket and also the first round of the border, which is a round of single crochet in the same yarn as your blanket to give it a neat finish. If you like a simple clean finish, you could stop at that point or you could add more rounds in a contrasting color. My blanket is a christening gift and I wanted it to be over the top with prettiness. So I finished it with an extra frilly border. If you'd like the pattern for my border, I'd be happy to share that with you. Let me know in the comments if you want a copy of the written pattern or if you'd prefer a video tutorial. You might have noticed the bunny toy I made. If you'd like to make a toy to go with your blanket, there are lots of simple patterns for baby toys out there. This rabbit is by Danielle L Designs. The pattern is clearly written and I found it easy to follow. You'll be pleased to know that she's kindly made her pattern available for free. I've popped info on where I downloaded her pattern in the description box. I've also put a link in there to a tutorial by Critter Crochet. She shows you how to embroider a simple face on crochet toys so you won't need safety eyes and your toy will be safe for under threes. The rose and the tutu skirt my rabbit is wearing are my own patterns and I'd be happy to share those with you. Just let me know if you'd rather a video tutorial or a written pattern. Let's talk supplies. I made my blanket with Australian four ply yarn which is between a number one super fine and a number two fine in yarn weight. To make my meter square blanket I use close to three of these 100 gram balls with some extra yarn in a different color for the border. If you're making a larger blanket you might want to go up to a DK or number three weight yarn. This is Bella Baby, Baby Wonder, Lilac for the blanket and Cream for the border. It's an acrylic and nylon blend and I hadn't used it before. It's soft but I found it quite staticky. It loves to stick to your fingers and there were a few times I'd have happily thrown it across the room if only I could disconnect it from my hands. The end result is gorgeous though. One friend described it as feeling like a hybrid between marshmallows and yarn. It really is that soft. As well as your yarn you'll need scissors and a needle. Mine is sticking into my long suffering sheep. Lastly, I need to talk about which crochet hook you should use. With fillet crochet, stitch definition is important. You want your stitches to be the perfect happy medium, not tight and squished, but not loose and poorly defined. You want the pattern to stand out so you can really see the dragonflies. My yarn label suggested a 3.25 millimeter hook, but I tried a few different hooks and settled on a three millimeter hook for my blanket. That gave me a soft drape and nice clear dragonflies. The hook your yarn label recommends might be totally fine, but if your stitches don't look right, you may need to do a bit of experimenting. Put a slip knot on your hook and begin your blanket with a chain which is a multiple of 16 plus 9. I'm going to make a small swatch to demonstrate, so I'm chaining 41, but for my baby blanket, I started with a chain of 201, which is 12 lots of 16 plus 9. When you work into your chain, you can either work into it by catching one loop like this in what I'd call the basic way, or you can turn your chain over and work into these little bumps on the back of the chain. You would still only catch one loop by inserting your hook like this. If you're not going to put a border on your blanket, I recommend you take the time to work into the back bumps as it will give a neater finish. But if you're adding a border, you might prefer to work into the chain in the basic way as it's faster and easier. We're going to start in the fourth chain from the hook. Don't count the loop on the hook. Count back one, two, three, and four. And into the fourth chain from the hook, yarn over, insert the hook. There are two loops on the hook plus one loop from the chain. Yarn over and pull through the chain to pull up a loop. There are three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two. There are two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops to finish the stitch. So far I've made two stitches because the chain of three that I skipped at the beginning stands in for the first double crochet of the row. If you need help recognizing your stitches, you might like to use a stitch marker at this point. Looking at your work from above, find the first V from your hook. Don't count the loop that was on the hook. This is the top of the first actual double crochet and the V just to the right of it is the top of the chain three. Pop your stitch marker into the top of the chain three. So when we work the next row, it'll be easier to place the last stitch of the row. 
In this pattern, the row we're working at the moment is called the setup row, not row one. The setup row is very simple. It's one double crochet in each chain. If you're working along with me, pause the video while you place one double crochet in each of the remaining chains and switch the video back on at the end of the row. I finished the setup row and I have a double crochet in each of the chains right the way to the end. If you count your double crochets, including this chain of three that stands in for the first double crochet of the row, you'll have your starting chain minus two. I started with a chain of 41, so I have 39 stitches in the setup row. The next row is the first row of the repeating pattern. Start by chaining three. You can put a stitch marker into the third chain if you'll find that helpful, and turn. The chain of three counts as the first stitch of the row. Work a double crochet into the next stitch along. If you're not sure where to place this stitch, look at your work from above so you can see the Vs and count back Vs from the hook. Count one, two, three, four, and five, and place your first double crochet into the fifth V from the hook. and double crochet in the next stitch along. And chain one, skip one, and double crochet in the next. If you look at it from above, you skip this V and double crochet in the next V. Repeat that, chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Repeat those stitches until there are four stitches remaining at the end of the row. Pause the video here, keep chaining one, skipping one, double crocheting. When you have four empty stitches left, including the chain three marked with a stitch marker, turn the video back on and I'll show you how to finish the first row of the repeating pattern. I have chained one, skipped one and double crocheted and I now have four stitches remaining. The last stitch is the top of the chain three I marked with my stitch marker. Every row in the pattern repeat will end the same way. Chain one, skip one, and one double crochet into each of the three remaining stitches. The last stitch is worked into the top of the chain three. You can work under the V, or I prefer to approach it from the side. I still catch two loops, but it's a lot less fiddly. And that is the first repeating row finished. This is how the blanket should look at the end of the first repeating row. The row begins with three double crochets, then it's chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, double crochet is then repeated across the width of the blanket. Then the row ends with a final chain one, skip one, and three double crochets together. Now for the second row of the pattern. All of the pattern repeat rows start in the same way. Chain three and turn your work. Then put a double crochet in the next two stitches. This chain three counts as a double crochet worked into the last stitch of the row below. So you need to work a double crochet into the second last stitch of the row below. If you have trouble finding where to work your stitch, look at it from above and count back Vs from your hook. One, two, three, four, and five. And in the fifth V, work a double crochet. then double crochet in the next stitch. Now chain one. Skip the chain space in the row below. 
and double crochet in the next stitch along. If you look at it from above, skip the V of the chain space and double crochet into the next V. That double crochet is the first stitch in the first block. The blocks are 15 stitches wide and are separated by chain one gaps. We're alternating between dragonfly and solid blocks, but for the second row of the repeating pattern, both types of blocks follow the same pattern. One double crochet in each stitch or chain for 15 spaces, then a chain one space. Then the next block starts following the same pattern. Let's get into it. We've done the first stitch of the block. The second stitch is worked into a chain space in the row below. You can either work into the chain, into the V of the chain, or insert the hook into the space itself and work the double crochet. I like to work into the chain space. Whichever you choose for this stitch, stick with it for the whole blanket. It looks funny when you change around. You'll need to do another 13 double crochets to get to the end of this block, alternating between working into a stitch in the row below and into a chain space in the row below. If you're on track, the 15th double crochet will be worked into a stitch in the row below. That is the final stitch of this block. Now chain one, skip the chain one space in the row below and double crochet in the next stitch. And that is the first stitch of the next block. You need 14 more stitches and then you'll chain one and skip one and start the next block. Pause the video here and keep crocheting blocks of 15 double crochets with chain one spaces between them. Meet me when you have four empty stitches remaining so I can finish the row with you. If you're on track with the pattern, the 15th double crochet of your last block should be directly on top of this stitch here, right before the last chain one space in the row below. You'll have four empty stitches left. That's this chain space and three double crochets in the row below that you haven't worked into. The rows in the pattern repeat all end in the same way. Chain one, skip one, and one double crochet in each of the last three stitches. Remember you can work into the final stitch, the chain three, from the side, which is a bit easier than getting your hook under the V at the top of it. That finishes the second repeating row. I finished three rows, the setup row, then rows one and two of the repeating pattern. The row starts with three double crochets, then there is a chain one space, then a block of 15 double crochets, then a chain one space before the next block of 15 double crochets. And obviously on your blanket, there'll be more blocks of 15 separated by a chain one space from the next block. The row ends with a final chain one space and a group of three double crochets, which finishes the row in the same way it started. Time to start the third row of the repeating pattern. Chain three, and turn. Double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Remember the chain three counts as the first double crochet of the row on top of the last stitch of the row below. 
If you have trouble finding where to put your first double crochet of the row, look at your work from above and count back Vs from your hook. And it's the fifth V that the double crochet goes in. Double crochet in the next stitch as well. If you look at the blanket so far, now that I'm a few rows into the repeating pattern, you can see that the beginning and end of the rows match up. There's always a chain one, skip one, and three double crochets at either end bordering the blanket. So chain one and skip one. Row three of the repeating pattern is where the first hint of the dragonflies appear, which means you need to start paying attention to which block is a solid block and which is a dragonfly block. The first block will be a dragonfly block. After my skip stitch, I'm going to work seven double crochets. So I skip that stitch. That's one double crochet and I need six more. That's my seventh double crochet. I've reached the middle of the block. Now I chain one and skip one and I'm going to work another seven double crochets, one in each of the next seven stitches to take me to the end of this first dragonfly block. If you're on track with the pattern, the seventh stitch will be worked into the stitch just before the chain one space in the row below, so the border of the block is lining up. That's my seventh stitch, the last stitch in the dragonfly block pattern for this row. The chain one space in the middle of the block is the tip of the dragonfly's abdomen. The next block will be a solid block. The solid blocks begin with a chain one, Skip the chain one space in the row below and work 15 double crochets, one in each of the next 15 stitches in the row below. Because I'm only doing a small swatch, when I finish these 15 stitches, I'll be ready to work the end of the row. But if you're making a blanket when you've done these 15 stitches, you're going to repeat the pattern for the dragonfly block and then another solid block and then another dragonfly block until you've worked your way across the width of your blanket. There is a chain one, skip one between each block and those chain spaces will line up with the chain spaces in the row below. If you keep an eye on that, it'll help you to keep on track with the pattern. I'm gonna write the pattern for the dragonfly block and the solid block up on the screen. If you're working along with me, pause the video and turn it back on when you have four stitch spaces remaining so I can show you how to finish repeating row three. I have four spaces remaining. My last block was a solid block, but the row ends the same way if your last block was a dragonfly block. Chain one, skip one, which is the chain space in the row below, and work one double crochet in each of these last three spaces. And that finishes the third repeating row. Let's have a look. I've just finished the third row of the repeating pattern. The beginning and end of this row lines up with the beginning and end of the row below. There are three double crochets and a chain one space at both ends. There are blocks of 15 stitches separated from the next block by a chain one space. But in this row, you can start to see the difference between the two kinds of blocks. I started with the dragonfly block. The next block is a solid block. 
then a dragonfly, then a solid, all the way across. At the moment, the dragonfly block doesn't look so different from the solid block, it just has a chain one space in the middle of it, which is the tip of the dragonfly's abdomen. The fourth repeating row starts with a chain three, which counts as the first double crochet, and turn. The chain three is the first stitch of the row, and it comes out of the last stitch of the row below. Put one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. If you have trouble finding where to place your stitch, look at your work from above and count back the Vs. Count one, two, three, four, five, and in the fifth V, double crochet. Then double crochet in the next stitch. That started the row with three double crochets. Now we start the first block of the row. Both block patterns start in the same way with a chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. My first block this row is a solid block. Look at the row below. If you have a chain space in the middle of the block, your first block is a dragonfly block and I'll walk you through that pattern in just a moment. We'll start with a solid block. Solid blocks are nice and easy. 15 double crochets and I've done the first of them so I have 14 more to go. I'm going to skip this bit as the solid block pattern is nice and simple. I'll come back to work my 15th stitch, the last stitch of this solid block, so I can start the dragonfly block with you. This will be the 15th stitch. It's lining up with the block in the row below. That finishes the solid block. Start the dragonfly block by chaining one and skipping one. And we're going to put seven double crochets, one in each stitch in the row below, which will take us to the chain one space in the row below. This is my seventh stitch. I've reached the chain space in the row below. This row we're also going to chain one, skip that chain space and put another seven double crochets in on the other side of the gap. That's one double crochet in each stitch in the row below. Those seven stitches will take you to the end of this dragonfly block, but they'll take me to the end of the row. So you will need to continue alternating between those two blocks. Your next block will be a solid block, then a dragonfly block, and so on, until you reach the point that I'm at now. I'll pause the screen for a moment and put the pattern for the fourth repeating row up on the screen. When you finish a block and have four stitches remaining, turn the video back on and join me to finish the fourth repeating row. When you've worked the final stitch of your last block, this row finishes like all the other rows in the pattern repeat. Chain one, skip the chain space in the row below, and put one double crochet into each of the last three stitches. And that is the fourth row of the pattern repeat finished. Let's have a look at the pattern so far. The rows still start and end in the same way. Three double crochets and a chain space. The blocks alternate between solid and dragonfly all the way along. The dragonfly blocks now have two chain spaces lined up on top of each other. In the fifth repeating row, the dragonfly will get its first pair of wings. The solid blocks though are the same as in the previous two rows, they're just blocks of 15 double crochets. The fifth repeating row starts with a chain three, which counts as the first double crochet, and turn. 
Start in the usual way by putting a double crochet in the next two stitches to create the starting group of three double crochets. If you need to, you can count back five Vs from your hook, the way I showed you in previous rows, to help you find where to place the first of your two double crochets. Now I have the three double crochets that begin the row, it's time for the first block. Have a look at your work so you know which type of block you're beginning the row with. I'm starting with a dragonfly block. If you're looking at a solid block, you need to chain one, skip one and work 15 double crochets. It's the same pattern that the solid blocks have followed for the last three rows. When you've done that, you can join me for the dragonfly block or I will briefly be crocheting a bit of the solid block after this dragonfly block if you need a reminder. Once I've sorted my yarn out, I'll start the dragonfly block. The pattern for this row starts with a chain one. Skip the chain space in the row below and work a double crochet in each of the next four stitches. When you have four double crochets, we're going to chain three and work a single crochet into this chain space in the previous row. So chain three. And skip three. Insert the hook into that space. Yarn over and pull up a loop. There are two loops on the hook yarn over and pull through both loops. That's a single crochet and that has created one small wing. We're going to do a mirror image of those stitches to create the second wing. Chain three, skip one, two, three, or look at your work from above and skip one, two, three Vs and double crochet into the fourth V. Then another three double crochets, one into each of the next three stitches, and that will take you to the end of the dragonfly block. Have a look and check that you're on track. You should have four double crochets and then a chain of three. A single crochet worked into the gap in the row below, then another chain of three and another four double crochets. Now it's time for a solid block. Chain one, skip one and work the first of your 15 double crochets. When you have 15 double crochets, you will start the next dragonfly block by chaining one, skipping one and following the pattern I've put up on the screen for you. Pause the video now, keep alternating between the blocks. Have a look at the row below to check that your blocks are lining up nicely. And I'll meet you at the end of the row when you have four empty stitches and we'll finish the fifth repeating row together. It's time to finish the row. Chain one, skip the chain space in the row below and put one double crochet into each of the last three stitches. There we go. Let's have a look at the pattern at the end of the fifth repeating row. The rows still start and end with three double crochets and a chain one space. The most interesting thing to look at here is the dragonfly blocks. The shape of the dragonfly is appearing. We've got the dragonfly's abdomen or tail and the first set of wings, the small set is there now too. Just make sure you're alternating between dragonfly blocks and solid blocks and that your blocks are lining up with a chain space dividing each block from the next one. The sixth repeating row starts with a chain three, which counts as a double crochet and turn your work over so you can head back in this direction. 
and then put a double crochet in each of the next two spaces. Remember you can count back these from the hook to help you place the first of these stitches. It goes in the fifth V from the hook. When the starting group of three double crochets is done, we can start the first block. This row, I'm starting with a solid block. Have a look at the row below to check whether you're starting with the dragonfly block or a solid block. I'm going to assume that you're comfortable with the pattern for the solid blocks from this point. So chain one, skip the chain space in the row below and work your 15 double crochets. I'll skip ahead now and meet you when it's time to start the dragonfly block. That's my 15th stitch, so the first solid block is done and it's time to start working on the dragonfly block. In this row, the sixth repeating row, we're going to create the larger pair of wings. The block starts in the usual way, chain one, skip one, and we're going to work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And next, we're going to chain four and put a single crochet into the top of the single crochet in the row below. So chain four, and single crochet into the top of the single crochet. If you have trouble finding that single crochet, if you're not confident recognizing your stitches, you can count the Vs on the top of the stitches, and it is the fifth V along that you need to work into. Your work should look like this. You should have one of the large dragonfly wings. For the other wing, we're going to use the same stitches, but in reverse. Chain four. Skip over the chain and the first stitch after the chain space and double crochet into the next stitch. Or if you look at the Vs, you're skipping the three Vs in the chain a fourth V is the top of this stitch, and then you're double crocheting into the fifth V. Then one double crochet in each of the next two stitches to finish the block. That will also finish the row for me, but obviously you'll have to keep going, alternating between the two patterns I've put up on the screen until you're ready to finish the row with me. Pause the video while you do that and switch it back on when you finish the last block of the row and you're ready to chain one, skip one and put one double crochet into each of the last three spaces. That finishes the sixth repeating row. Let's have a look at the pattern so far. The solid block is exactly as it was in the row below, but the dragonfly blocks are a bit more interesting. The second set of wings has appeared. Each block starts with a chain one and skip one. Then there are three double crochets, a chain of four, a single crochet into the top of the single crochet in the row below, and then another chain of four, and another group of three double crochets. Hopefully your dragonfly blocks are looking just like this one. Looking at the rest of the pattern, you'll see that the sides of your blanket are still nice and even with three double crochets at the beginning of the row and three double crochets at the end of the row. The chain one spaces that separate the blocks are lining up with the chain one spaces in the rows below. The seventh repeating row begins with a chain three. That stands in for the first double crochet and turn, then double crochet in the next two stitches. Remember you can count back Vs from your hook and work your first double crochet in the fifth V from the hook if you find that helpful. The 
That starts the row in the usual way with a group of three double crochets and it's time to start working the blocks. I'm starting with a dragonfly block. If you're starting with a solid block, the pattern for that is the same as in the last few rows. So just chain one, skip one and work your 15 double crochets, then join me for the dragonfly block. This row, the dragonfly block pattern also calls for 15 double crochets. Some of those double crochets are worked into stitches and some are worked into the chain spaces. Let me show you how to do it. Start with a chain one, skip the chain space in the row below and work a double crochet into the next stitch along. And then put one double crochet into each of the next two stitches. This bit's easy, we're just working into the stitches in the row below. But now I've reached that chain four space from row six and I'm going to work the next four stitches into this space. I've worked four double crochets into the chain space. The next stitch goes just here into the top of the single crochet between the wings. If you look at it from above, it is this V just here, the first V after the chain space. And that has created a little antennae for the dragonfly. The next four double crochets are worked in the other wing, this chain four space. That's the fourth double crochet. It might look like those four double crochets haven't filled the chain space, but you can shift the stitches so they fill the space properly. And I tend to find that as you do more rows, your stitches settle into the proper spots and you can block the finished blanket if you're not happy with how the stitches are sitting. Next, we're gonna put one double crochet in each of the next three spots. If you look at your work from above, the stitch we're working into is this V here, the first one after the chain. That's the third stitch and that finishes this row of the dragonfly block. Let's have a look. If you count, you should have 15 double crochets spread out across this block. You might wanna wriggle the stitches worked over the chains around a bit so they sit better, but these 15 stitches have finished off the dragonfly. I like the way the stitches are positioned. It creates the subtle little antennae but you don't have to emphasize those spaces. If you don't like them, if you spread the stitches out really well, the antennae gaps almost disappear. I'll just pop back the stitch that I dropped. I'm gonna work a solid block now. It's just a normal solid block. It follows the same pattern chain one, skip one and work 15 double crochets, one in a stitch. Pause the video now and keep working on your blanket, alternating between the dragonfly blocks and the solid blocks until you have four stitch spaces remaining. Then you can join me to finish the row. This part of the pattern is hopefully feeling easy by now. We're going to chain one, skip the chain space, and work one double crochet in each of the last three stitches. That finishes the seventh repeating row. 
Let's have a look at the pattern so far. In this row, both the dragonfly block pattern and the solid block pattern had you work a chain one, skip one, then 15 double crochets. But in the dragonfly blocks, we now have something very different from the plain solid blocks. You can really see the dragonfly, including, and I love this, the little antennae. They're subtle, but they're there if you look for them. If your dragonfly blocks are looking good, double check that the chain spaces which divide the blocks are lined up properly and that your edges are okay. You have three double crochets at the beginning and three double crochets at the end of the row. The final repeating row, the eighth row of the pattern repeat, starts in the usual way. Chain three and turn. Then put a double crochet in each of the next two stitches. You can count back and place your stitch in the fifth V from the hook, like I showed you in earlier rows, if you need help to place that first stitch. This row is really simple and the pattern is the same for the solid and the dragonfly blocks. So it doesn't matter whether you're starting the row with a solid block or a dragonfly block, you'll do the same thing. Sorry, I just need to sort my yarn out. The pattern for the blocks this row is chain one and skip one, then place one double crochet in each of the next 15 stitches. So it's a solid block pattern for both the dragonfly blocks and the solid blocks. Keep repeating that until you have four stitches remaining. Pause the video now and switch it back on when you're ready to finish the row with me. I have four empty stitches, so chain one, skip the chain space and place one double crochet in each of the three remaining stitches. That finishes the eighth repeating row. Have a little look, admire the dragonfly again. This row was simple, so hopefully you're on track and your chain spaces between each block are lining up. The eighth repeating row is the last row in the pattern repeat. And as I'm assuming you're making a blanket that is more than nine rows long, now it's time to start the repeating pattern again. Your next row will follow the same pattern as the first repeating row. I've put timestamps in the description box. You can use those to jump back to the first repeating row so you can work your way through the pattern from rows one to eight again. Just make sure when you reach the third row of the pattern repeat, which is where the dragonfly's abdomen appears, you pay attention to the pattern in the blocks below. So you make sure you stack each dragonfly block on top of a solid block so you get that lovely checkerboard effect. When your blanket is as long as you'd like it to be, you work the first repeating row one final time to put a border around the last set of blocks and then come back and join me so I can show you how to finish your blanket with one last row and a simple single crochet border. The single crochet border I'm going to show you is worked in the same color as your blanket. So if you get ahead of me, don't cut your yarn. I crocheted up one more set of blocks so I've got a little more to work with to show you how to finish your blanket. When you're ready to finish your blanket, like I said a moment ago, you need to work the first repeating row one last time to put a top border on your last set of blocks. As you can see, I've done that. Now it's time to add the final row to the blanket. The final row is a little like the setup row. It's entirely double crochet. Start by chaining three and then turn. This is an easy row. The only thing to keep in mind is that you're working into some chain spaces in the row below. So you need to either work into the chain space or into the chains themselves. Just stick with what you've done for the rest of the blanket. Don't change it up now. The chain three is the first double crochet. So start in the next stitch along and double crochet. If you find it helpful, you can count back Vs from your hook and place your first double crochet in the fifth V from the hook. Double crochet in the next stitch too. Once you've done the first two stitches, there's a chain space in the row below. There are no gaps in this final row. So double crochet in the chain space or in the chain if that's what you've done for the rest of your blanket. And then continue along, putting a double crochet in each stitch and each chain space. Pause the video while you do that and I'll meet you at the end of the row. 
I'm nearing the end of the row. I have four empty spaces remaining, including this chain space, and all four of these get double crochets. Remember, there are no chain spaces in this row, just double crochets. That is the blanket pattern finished. You could stop here if you want to. It does look rather lovely just as it is. There's a nice solid edge to the blanket because the setup row and the final row are just double crochet and down each side of the blanket there are those groups of three double crochets. If you want to add a border though, I suggest starting with a round of single crochet worked in the same color as your blanket so your border has a nice clean starting point. You can use a contrasting color for any other border rounds you decide to add after that. Start the border by chaining one, then turn your blanket so you can start working down the side. This border is entirely single crochet. The idea is to try to evenly space the single crochets out. When I work down the sides, I find that two single crochets per row works for me. If your stitches are shorter or taller than mine, you will need more or less single crochets per row. So while I'm going to show you exactly where I place my stitches, you may need to place your stitches differently to allow for your crochet style. This bit is more an art than a science. I insert my hook around the side of the stitch and single crochet. It's a good idea to put a stitch marker in this first single crochet. It can be surprisingly tricky to find this stitch when you finish the round. I put my next stitch here. This is the top of the turning chain. Then I'll work around the turning chain then into the top of the stitch. The next single crochet goes around the stitch. And then I'm going to work into the top of the turning chain. And I go on like that. I'll get you to pause the video here and continue single crocheting down the side of your blanket. I'll meet you just before the first corner to show you how to tackle that. I'm getting very close to the corner and working into the top of the turning chain and then around the turning chain. This is the very first turning chain of the blanket and the corner will be just here in this stitch. This is the first chain of the turning chain of three. You should be able to catch two loops of the chain. And the corners for this blanket are three single crochets, just three single crochets worked into the same stitch. Now you need to single crochet along the bottom of the blanket, working one single crochet into each chain. Pause the video and keep single crocheting. I'll meet you just before the next corner. The corner goes in this final chain. Work three single crochets into it. You can see the tail there. I'm going to ignore it because this is just a swatch, but you could work some stitches over the tail as you go or just leave it to weave in with a needle later. When the three single crochets for the corner are done, start working along the side of the blanket. However you arranged your stitches when you worked down the other side, do that when you work up this side. I work around this stitch to start, then into the top of the stitch, around the turning chain, then into the top of the turning chain and so on. Pause the video and I will meet you for the third corner. I'm nearly at the corner. I'm going to work around the turning chain. Then three single crochets for the corner go into the top of the turning chain, this stitch here. I like to try to catch the proper V of this stitch for the corner. It's not essential though. There. Thank you. 
That's the third corner done. Pause the video while you put one single crochet in each stitch along the top of the blanket and I'll meet you for the last corner. Your blanket is so close to finished, I would love to see how it looks. Tag me on Instagram so I can admire it or leave me a comment. Tell me who you're making this for and what colour you've used. My lilac blanket is for my sister-in-law to give to her new goddaughter. Okay, the fourth corner is like the others. Put three single crochets into the top of this double crochet, the last double crochet of the blanket. And then if you've marked the first single crochet of the border, it will be very easy to finish off. If you didn't mark the stitch, just make sure you aren't mixing the stitch up with this chain one that started the border. Then either slip stitch to the first single crochet, or if this is where you're finishing your blanket, I recommend you use an invisible join to get a much neater finish. Invisible joins are such a great technique to use for the last join on any project. And with a beautiful blanket like this one, it is so worth doing. If you haven't used an invisible join before go straight on over and watch this video here otherwise now your blanket is done you have a problem you need a new crochet project and wouldn't you know I happen to have a few videos about crochet thanks for watching I'll see you next time